Hey, it's Ferrity here on my YouTube channel and blog Pretty Little Button. If you're new here, I make paper crafting tutorials for the everyday crafter and today I'm taking part in the Save the Crafty YouTuber hop run by Justine Hovey. This hop is sponsored by a variety of fabulous companies as you can see here where there are prizes along the hop to win and you have a chance of winning a craft pack here on my channel. I'll talk more about the hop later on in the video so let's get started. I've got a selection of cards today showing you a variety of ways to create abstract backgrounds for modern cards. I've recently been creating more abstract backgrounds and I'll link to an example here but I wanted to show you a variety of ways you can do this with a selection of different media you may have in your craft stash. Okay so the first technique is using embossing paste. This is great for creating texture to the background and it's so easy to apply to get that abstract look. I'm using the embossing paste from All New, but you can use any you have to hand. And I've this is coloured white, but I'm going to use some dye inks from Catherine Pooler to colour the embossing paste. Now I'm using my spatula to put some of the paste onto my glass mat and then I'm smooshing Samba ink down onto my glass mat next to it. To mix the colour in, I'm just using the spatula to move the paste over the ink and mix it in until there is a consistent smooth colour. If you want it darker, just smoosh more of the ink down next to it, not over it, and then just mix that in again. For the second colour, I'm using all that jazz and I'm just mixing it in in the same manner. So for all of the colours today in the video, I went for a coral teal combo and I really loved how they all turned out in the end. As embossing paste has moisture in it, it is best to use a heavier weight cardstock for your card panel. So here I'm using a £110 Nina Classic Crest Solar White card. I've changed to a more flatter, broader spatula to smooth the paste down over the card panel. And I'm creating two blocks of colour. It doesn't have to be neat or precise. When the edges are more organic, it's going to look much more natural and much more abstract. Now, as these two colours are not next to each other on the colour wheel, it's best not to mix them too much, otherwise you're going to start to get a muddier colour. Now, purple and blue do mix well together, but this is a bit more of a tealy colour rather than a true blue. This needs to be set to one side until it's dry before you actually add any elements over the top of it. So, for the second technique, we are going to create an abstract background, but with hot foiling. So for this one, I'm using Transfer Deco Foil Gel. And this needs a laminator or a mink machine, but there is the Transfer Duo Gel on the market, which I believe would work just as well for this, but I don't have any in my stash, so I can't use it. Again, a heavyweight cardstock is best to use because it will reduce any warping to the card because there is moisture with this gel. And I'm applying the white gel over the panel with a spatula in one corner of the panel and then I'm moving up the panel and reducing the amount of card I cover with it. Now this, as I say, applies white, but once it dries, it dries clear. And therefore, when it's clear, you know it's ready to foil. For this background, I'm using the Fab Foils from Wow embossing powder and I'm using teal and blush. Now I have turned my mint machine on to heat setting 3 to heat up but you can also use a laminator as well if you don't have a mink machine. I've placed the dried panel into a carrier sheet and I've cut some of the blush foil and teal foil, uh, just covering up the card panel and one half is teal and one half is blush. I always find the reveal of taking foil off once it's been hot foiled never tires. And I just love how this turned out. I think the way I've applied it, the way I've applied the gel gives it a really rustic look. And it's as though I kind of painted the foil on. And these two foils pair beautifully together. The third technique uses heat embossing to create an abstract background. And for this, I'm using a new tool, the Wow Mixed Media Brush. It is a really good tool for this kind of technique and this tool has a brush that sits in a pot of embossing ink. 
So you can then apply the ink anywhere you wish to just by simply painting the ink on. For this background, I'm creating three strips of heat embossing and I'm brushing a neat horizontal line with the brush. Now it is hard to see it on screen, but you can easily see where you're applying the ink because it is nice and shiny. And the first powder I'm then covering the lines with is Glassy Ocean by Jew Firth with Wow Embossing Powder. This is a lovely translucent teal powder. After this was then heat set, I have gone back in with the brush to apply another strip of ink down the middle. And this time I'm covering this with Soft Mango from Wow Embossing Powder. This background came together really, really quickly. So it's one that you could easily mass produce for a variety of backgrounds to create many cards. For the fourth technique, we are going to use watercolors. Now don't worry, you don't need to be an avid watercolorist to do this kind of background. It's really, really easy. I'm using my Ulta New Watercolor 36 pound set and I've mixed coral berry with some crimson just to get a slightly darker coral color. You need to remember that watercolors, when they dry back, they dry back lighter. I'm applying the ink to make a square and I'm using a wet on dry technique. So my paintbrush is wet, but the paper is dry. I'm adding a smaller rectangle also down in the opposite corner. Um, and as be my other color is going to be ocean waves, which is a teal color, I'm just making sure that the coral paint is dry before I use any blue over the top. You could get that muddier purple color again, and I want to keep these quite nice and crisp. But before I apply the blue color and I've dried the panel, I'm just going back over the coral color, just to darken it up again, because as I mentioned, watercolors do dry back lighter. So once the panel's dried, I'm then painting a large blue square in the middle, overlapping the coral um, to link the shapes together. For the last technique, I'm creating the abstract background with ink cubes. And this, out of all of the backgrounds, was the quickest one to make. Now I've got all the new mini ink cubes here, but any mini ink cubes will work just as well. And I'm simply dragging the ink pad along the card panel. So first of all, I'm just dragging coral berry ink from the top down the panel to about two thirds of the way. And then I'm dragging teal cave mini ink cube up the panel two thirds of the way. And then I'm just applying coral berry again um, to the side of this sort of more in the middle of the panel just to get a bit more of a variation. This, as I say, took seconds to make, but you can easily change up the direction and the colors just to suit any kind of occasion. Now I'm just going to start finishing off all the cards and all cards were foam mounted onto a white card base. But whilst I'm doing that, I want to talk a little bit more about the hop. So the lovely Justine Hovey organizes the Save the Crafty YouTuber hop which opens up viewers to new card makers and YouTubers, as well as helping the YouTubers reach monetization goals they may have. There are lots of prizes along the hop, so make sure you leave a comment at each stop for your chance to win, as well as letting us know if you're in the USA or you are international. And if you like the video, why not think about giving it a thumbs up and possibly subscribing to the channel if you want to see more from them in the future. You do need to leave a comment on each of the videos by the 5th of April and Justine will announce the winners on her blog and her channel by the 10th of April. So the more comments you leave, the more chance you have of winning. I'm giving away a craft package of goodies as you can see here and I will pay the postage, but any local custom fees are at the winner's responsibility. Okay, so just quickly run through these cards. The embossing paste card was finished off with a white die cut from the Ulta New Fantasy Floral die set and I added an embossed sentiment from the Pink Fresh Studio Leafy Decor stamp. The foiled background used the Pink Fresh Botanical Diamond Frame Builder die in one corner and I used a Happy Birthday sentiment from Ulta New's Birthday Builder stamp set. For the heat embossed background, I used three white palm die cuts. These came from the Alternate Palet Palm die set. And then I added a foiled sentiment from Gracielli Designs Digital Stamps. 
For the watercolour background, I used an Auto New Happy die cut and I stamped birthday sentiment. And lastly, the inked background used the Pink Fresh Studio Hello Sweet die and another sentiment that was also heat embossed coming from the leafy decor stamp set from Pink Fresh Studio. All of the cards were then embellished with Tonic Nouveau Crystal Drops in white gloss. If you are interested in anything I have used, I've got a supplies list in the description box below, along with a link to my blog where you can see some more pictures. Also, you'll find the next link in the hop in the description box below as well. Let me know in the comments below which card out of the five was your favourite. I hope you enjoyed today's video and think about subscribing to my channel. If you do, press that bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video is up. Until next time, happy crafting!